thank you for tuning our way. I'm here in Boswell's Hotel, which is directly across the road from Leinster House. And with me is Deputy Kathleen Funchlin, who is the Sinn Féin spokesperson on Children and Youth Affairs. And also with me is uh, Barbara Scanlon. Barbara is the spokesperson for the Alliance of Birth Mothers Campaigning for Justice. And with the mentor for ABC, uh, Maura Butterley, who is a retired social worker. And we're here today to discuss TUSLA, and part of that discussion will be uh, ABC's recent uh, meeting with Bernard Gloucester, who is the CEO of TUSLA. So uh, thank you very much, Deputy Function, for agreeing to talk to us today. Mm -hmm. um, and could I begin now by asking you about your views around TUSLA? Okay, so before I became elected as a TD, um, I was a councillor and I also worked for SIP2, the trade union. So I've had dealings for a number of years with TUSLA and in various forms. Obviously, working for SIP2 is just dealing with, uh, with workers and their potential issues. But I did see from that stage, I found they were very defensive. Um, you know, as an organisation, they kind of sort of put the walls up and I could, at times I did find them difficult. Since um, being elected then and since becoming the Children and Youth Affairs spokesperson and I've done a lot of work around the area of childcare and the early years and workers rights in that area, I've, I've had a lot of experiences and unfortunately, as I said, our, our committee meeting about two weeks ago, it's been all negative. Uh, I get a lot of people coming to me who at uh, one stage in their life were struggling and felt they needed to get help and maybe needed to have their kids in care for a short period of time while they dealt with whatever was going on and it's mainly women that fall into that category that I'm talking that come to me anyway and then it gets to a stage where they're doing well um, things are going well for them in their lives and obviously they're looking to increase access for their children so that eventually they can have them back at home with them and this seems to be an area that I've come across that's a, a difficult area in terms of getting answers getting the access increased who do you speak to social workers are changing all the time sometimes there isn't a social worker assigned it's very frustrating people go weeks months and turns into years with our answers and obviously if you're in a situation where you might have access for a number of hours a week, if you can't get that increased, you know that's pushing your time frame for actually getting your children back full time way further out. So that would be my issue that there's serious lack of communication and I would say at times as well, lack of empathy with people and people need time frames, people need answers, they need someone that they can contact. And for me, I suppose what I think is that would that will result in a situation where when people do need help, they'll be reluctant to come forward and ask for it because they feel that they'll be penalised for this. Now, you mentioned uh, the recent meeting of Trusted CEO Bernard Gloucester before the uh, Joint Committee on Children and Youth Affairs. What are your views on his appearance before that committee meeting? Well, that was his first meeting and he's new in as the CEO. So as I said at that meeting, I would give him the benefit of the doubt because I do think you need to try and work with people and you're never going to achieve anything if you can't work with people that sometimes it does get to a stage where if the other party is not willing to work with you you know that becomes extremely difficult but I really hope he spoke a lot about reform he spoke a lot about changes that were needed he did use the word defensive himself in relation to Tusla so I hope that he really means all that and he's actually going to take all that on board and put the reforms in and put the changes in that are really, really badly needed. And I will give him a chance to see if he will do that. I think it would be unfair not to. But just unfortunately, you know, you do become cynical, especially when you're dealing with them on a regular basis and your dealings are particularly negative. But, you know, let's hope that there is so much reform needed, you know. Well, you are a vocal critic of the lack of children's rights uh, poor quality of child protection and welfare in the country when you're speaking in the Dáil Chamber. And I have seen you uh, challenge the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs, uh, Minister Sapone, a number of times. What are your views on her performance as Minister? I have mixed views. Um, I did probably have higher hopes when I, the day that all the ministers were announced which actually seems like a lifetime ago now, it was only 2016, but I did think, you know, she was always vocal herself. She was an independent. 
she seemed to be someone that was a bit more straight talk and so it's like a lot of the things where I think the failings are is this just sort of unwavering support for an organisation such as TUSLA. I think it's really important as the minister to hold them to account and to ask questions and to make sure that questions are being answered. And I think if you start off by saying, well, we have they have my support no matter what, mm-hmm. that's not good for anybody in any organisation. Everybody, particularly in that line of work, should be held to account and should be open to you know, constructive criticism. So that's where I would see... She's failed. I know she's done some positive things around um, childcare and different payments, but there's mixed views on that as well because a lot of kids who, you know, who would have been getting a lot of support now are falling into a different category and are probably going to slip through the cracks, which always seems to happen with the children in this country. And that's, I suppose, why I feel so passionate about it and why I speak out so much about it because I just think of the kids at the end of the day and you just think they're so innocent and they're so vulnerable and... You know, just to think that anything is happening to any child in a negative way. And I know it's we have to live in the real world, too. But that's what kind of, I suppose, drives me to try and keep asking the questions and holding people to account, because I want to always be able to say, well, at least I did my best to try and change the the way things are. And I just think in our country, we have such a bad past. When you look at the Magdalene Laundries, when you look at the institutions, that a lot of children were forced into. And we've had so many apologies in the doll. And so many people say, oh, it was horrific, and it was. But yet, in many ways, we're continuing that type of behaviour. Even today, I just came from a debate on child homelessness. You know, we have the highest figures we've ever had in relation to children homeless coming up to Christmas, you know, an exciting time, or should be, I should say, an exciting time for most kids. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think um, I'd like to see the minister being more vocal on, you know, making sure that she she gets answers to qu- making sure she's asking questions of organisations and then making sure she's getting those answers. Tosla actually issued a press statement around child homelessness. Is there a danger now that Tusla are going to use homelessness as an excuse to move in and take children and place them in foster care? I didn't actually see their, their statement, but... I, I, I wouldn't think so, being very, very honest, because I haven't come across that now myself. And I would deal with a lot of people who've been in homelessness who've then thankfully come out of it again or are at risk mm-hmm. of homelessness. Um, but I suppose we'd have to keep a close eye on it because, you know, there has been a lot of very negative things around them. But what I have an issue with is we are often told, and again today, that there's wraparound supports and there's various services for children who are in homelessness. I have never actually seen those in practical terms or what they are on the ground. So I'd like to see a bit more of that. Like we're often told that trusts are there in that way to support and help. But I don't I don't know exactly what way they're supporting because I've never seen the practical, you know, particularly let's say in rural areas where emergency accommodation might be far away from schools or other family. Um, so there's, there's so many things that they actually could be doing and focusing their energies on something positive like that as well. Well, EPIC, which is an organisation, it's empowering people in care. It's a a voluntary organisation that advocates for young people in the care system and they've actually published their annual report today. And one of the issues that has come up is the fact that a lot of young people are going directly from foster care into homelessness when they turn 18. Yeah, and and this is the thing about aftercare workers. There's not probably enough aftercare workers and what actual supports, again, Mm. practical supports are there for people. And it's very sad as well to think that you literally go from from one situation into another negative situation there needs to be much better support and it's it's practical things that can be done Mm -hmm. in terms of the the various payments towards rent you know they could be increased for people coming out of care there could be so much more done in that regard but uh, epic actually do very good work in fairness to them as well okay well we'll come back to you later the Alliance of Birth Mothers Campaigning for Justice was set up in July in Athlone and it is a group that advocates for um, mothers whose children have been taken into foster care. And uh, actually, uh, ABC has made you know, quite good tracks in the last couple of months. We uh, released a report which was actually released here at a press conference in Buswell's Hotel in August. That has been circulated to every deputy in the Dáil. We have got a number of Dáil deputies and three uh, 
government ministers writing letters of support for the for the group and a senior figure on the Fianna Fáil front bench um, approached Bernard Gloucester, the CEO of Tusla, on our behalf uh, to see would he meet with us and he did in fact meet with us last month and uh, I attended that meeting as the convener to ABC. Also present at the meeting was uh, Maura Butterley who is the mentor uh, of, to ABC and Barbara Scanlon who is a spokesperson. Now um, I'll just briefly uh, give my um, view on the meeting. Um, present uh, at the meeting was Bernard Gloucester and also Jim Gibson who is the Chief of Operations for Tusla and Ger Brophy who is a senior social worker and uh, the um, discussions began uh, I, I suppose always approach the issue with heart and uh, I began to um, document or to speak about uh, cases um, where mothers are exper experiencing, having, they're having very bad experiences at the hands of Tusla and uh, Bernard Gloucester, um, for want of a better word, shut me up very quickly because I was coming at it from an emotional point of view and the inference was that this was a business meeting and um, it wasn't about discussing the effects that it was having on mothers um, and so I felt not part of the meeting for the rest of the meeting. So I'm going to uh, chat now to Maura and Barbara and ask them for their views of on the meeting. So maybe if we could just begin with Maura and if we could Maura, um, what are your views of the meeting that we had with Bernard Gloucester and Jim Gibson and Ger Brophy? Well, given my history in terms of uh, child, uh, the, the whole children's services in this country, I didn't have any great hopes, to be honest with you. And um, I was glad they agreed to meet with us, and um, I found it a very civil meeting, for want of a better word. But um, I found him, when I put my point of view forward from a social work point of view, I found him quite dismissive of everything I had to say. That's all I can say. Um, he didn't really give me any hope that he was actually going to make a big difference. Um, I did ask him about the fact that they couldn't retain social workers and that social workers felt they spent 80% of their time doing reports and justifying their existence instead of being able to go out, meet families, get to know families and build up relationships with people who came for their support. And he said, well, that was Hickel's responsibility because they have to fill out all these reports. That was mainly what he said. And uh, I didn't, when I walked away from that meeting, I thought, well, well, nothing changes and everything changes. Uh, I'm hoping he said he was going to reform situations and that he did say to us that the culture was all wrong. Um, but um, I, wish, I wish I had faith in the whole system, but I have absolutely no faith in Tusla whatsoever. Um, that's all I can say. I'm hoping, maybe, I'm hoping that maybe something positive eventually will come out of it. But the agreement reached in the end was not the... was. Uh, I thought we reached a certain agreement, and apparently he's of a different opinion, so that's all I can say, really. And somebody else might fill in on that agreement, uh, yes. but uh, I thought we reached a certain agreement because I wouldn't um, have any faith in just uh, investigating anything about themselves. That's the truth. That's just from, from my whole experience. And I think a lot of people, individuals who are interested in their very best in a system that's not suited to protect children. It's not suited to protect... It's a, it's a business... And what is what is a business business from protecting children? How can you have a business protecting children? I, I'll go into that later, but that's what it is, and so I don't have any great faith. I'd love to have faith. I'd love to say we've learned our lessons from history and that we would have a great child protection service, but we've put, to me, is an abysmal failure in that regard. But that's just my point of view. So I, okay. somebody else wants to... Yeah, Maura, uh, and I will come back to you on that question then and that issue of how you see changes in the system. So maybe, uh, Barbara, would you like to uh, tell us what your views are on the meeting that we had with Bernard Gloucester? Um, I suppose for me, I think we went with a set agenda. Uh, we put our cards on the table about what we were looking for. And my, my take of the meeting was he agreed to it. Um, now, he agreed that uh, we would be allowed to independently, um, there would be an independent review on all of the files, 
but Tusla would pay for it. That was the first thing. The second thing was that any woman that came through ABC and that allowed her file to go through for this independent review, that she wouldn't be punished. So if she had access for three hours this week, there would be no change until we got the results of the review. And the third thing that we agreed was both parties would get the results simultaneously of this review. So we left the meeting. I, I honestly thought we, we accomplished, I suppose, as much as we could. I thought Bernard Gloucester was willing to work with us. Um, and when we sent over a letter to get him to sign off, he completely changed his mind. So for Tusla, for me, they are not fit for purpose. Bernard Gloucester, in his new role, failed very much at the first hurdle very much at the first hurdle, very disappointed with him, and that's what I believe the outcome of the meeting was. OK, could we drill down a little bit into that? What exactly is ABC looking for? ABC in the short term is looking for every mother, every family to have a reunification plan. That's the very least that they can do. I mean, we're five weeks before Christmas. It's very sad. Five weeks before Christmas, there are mothers out there that are isolated, uh, social workers won't return a phone call. They have nobody to turn to. They are ringing us 24 hours a day. There are mothers that are suicidal. Um, they have been isolated from their family. There is absolutely no help out there. Christmas morning is supposed to be the most ama amazing morning in any house. And I want everyone to think about those children that want to come home for Christmas and about those parents that are not allowed to see them. It's absolutely appalling. This is what they did, Anna, in the mother and baby homes. Uh, there are children with a huge history, a huge history in this country. Absolutely disgusting, to be honest, is what we have. And in 2019, nothing has changed. And I want the social workers that are actually social workers and did this passionately because they believed this was their love for children and they wanted to make the change. I want them to stand up and be counted, be accountable and do the right thing. That's the least they can do for these families. OK, so can I just put you back over the correspondence between ABC and Bernard Gloucester? Yeah. What, just to uh, explain a little bit in more detail what yeah. exactly um, ABC wanted from Bernard Gloucester. OK, so ABC are looking for, actually it's not what we wanted, it's what we agreed with Bernard Gloucester. Yes, we it agreed is. on we did. an yeah. independent review. ABC would hand in the files. They would be independently reviewed by a company outside of Tusla and Bernard Gloucester promised us he would find the funding from somewhere. But now Bernard Gloucester is telling us that Tusla will investigate Tusla, like the Scouts are investigating the <coughs> Scouts, like the Catholic Church are investigating the Catholic Church. There has to be change. So we're calling for a public inquiry and an independent review into all of these files. Give children a chance, give their parents a chance and right the wrongs once and for all. So basically, um, the three of us are in agreement. Uh, we were present at the meeting. We heard what Bernard Gloucester agreed to. And the three of us now are witness to the fact that he is going back on his word. And uh, what he is offering is not what we agreed to at the meeting. And as Barbara has said, we feel that Bernard Gloucester has let us down badly and that he has actually fallen at the first hurdle. And I suppose uh, you heard him yourself, um, Kathleen, at the, when he appeared before the uh, Children's Committee, he actually said that he met with ABC and that um, it was his understanding that ABC were happy with the outcome of the meeting. So, um, and you have been a huge support to uh, mothers and children. Um, I suppose in the last, weekend Sinn Féin had its uh, order and I think it's now on the public record that they will go into coalition with another uh, political party so it's not outside the bounds of possibility that Sinn Féin could be in government come the next election and it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that you might find yourself Minister for Children. <laughs> so, I don't know about that. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, if you were to find yourself in that position, what would you do? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think the key thing in it all for me, obviously, is the rights of children and the children's interests. So, I think I wouldn't go in 
um, just telling everybody they have my support on wavering. I would ask questions. I would do investigations and find out exactly what's going on and not be afraid to do that, first of all. And I think, you know, they say when you become a minister that you kind of get surrounded straight away by a lot of people in the civil service. And, you know, you have to kind of try and see the wood from the trees but I think it's really important to stay true to why because I genuinely think the vast majority of people that got involved in politics at one stage anyway got involved for a genuine reason or they wanted to make change and a lot of people lose that along the way and then maybe by the time people get to the possibility of being a minister they're you know I don't know what happens to people if something changes in them or something but I, I do think you need to be able to go in with an open mind, but also not be afraid to make difficult decisions, not be afraid to hold people to account, not be afraid to potentially, you know, make very serious changes. Because what I thought was good initially with the Scout in Ireland thing was their funding was immediately stopped. But then the investigation seems to be dragging on for, I think it's up to near two years now. It's like uh, Barbara said, it's been, they're being self-investigated. So... I don't know what happened there that it all went so horribly wrong that initially a good decision was made and then, you know, it, nothing really came of it. And that's what seems to happen on a regular basis in this country and the amount of, of public inquiries that we've had because of it. And rightly so to a certain extent, but at this stage we should have learned our lessons from the past and we shouldn't have to get to a stage of that. We should be able to have every organization should be open to an independent investigation an independent appeals process they're just uh, normal basic rights and everyone should be entitled to have that if you're not happy with decisions made by tusla there should be an independent genuinely independent appeals process in place and i suppose that's the great difficulty with tusla is because tusla investigates tusla when there is a hse uh, report and there have been reports after reports after reports that have slated tusla but there is no outside body that then comes in that TUSLA has to be held accountable to. TUSLA, it, it, the remit of TUSLA itself to actually bring about the changes that are recommended. Yeah, and, and that's that's a mistake. Like You're, you're never going to, in any organisation, um, you, you can't have an organisation investigate itself. That should be mm-hmm. just immediately not stopped. Like That should not be the case. Mm-hmm. So if I could come back to Maura, um, Maura, you've been around the block a good few times. 101 times. 101 times. And Maura, what do you see as being the significant changes between when you worked as a social worker and what's actually happening nowadays? Well, I, you know, I, I said to you before about I was shocked when I saw the level of child prostitution. That was my big thing, and the children who died were on the streets and um, I was involved in all those reports and I was on the working party and uh, uh, you remember with Fine Gael, a working party and they suggested setting up off Tussle and uh, before, prior to that and um, there was a whole issue when the deaths of children in care and they said the system wasn't pro- working properly but it was under 2004 uh, act that set up uh, the HSE and left the HSE impenetrable Nobody could question it. And even with the minister at the time, which was Mary Harney and um, Barry Andrews, who was a junior minister, they couldn't get any answers out of uh, the HSE at the time as well. And one of the biggest critics of that whole thing was actually Frances Fitzgerald. Uh, she was scathing about the way they couldn't get any answers out of uh, But what... What really angers me is that I actually believed it was going to be some proper reforms. But what Fine Gael, they used the same legislation and set up TUSLA under the same legislation, which means TUSLA as an entity on its own cannot be questioned. The same secrecy persists in TUSLA that persisted in the HSE and the same culture as well. They buried it all. They didn't change anything. They buried it deep down within TUSLA. And this really angers me. And then what they did basically at the end of the day was they set up a whole system of hierarchical management, which we complained about because they, they say they want to keep frontline workers, but they don't behave as if they want to keep frontline workers. I mean, I'll tell you something, if I would never go near social work nowadays the way it's set up. It's set up as a business. And they have a whole series of things. It's like box ticking. Social workers, and I'm saying some of them do very good, uh, now really are civil servants. They're not social workers anymore. They tick 
boxes. They have a whole series of things they have to go through and they tick boxes. And for own, their own safety, if they tick the boxes that they're told to tick, then they're doing their job properly and they will be supported right through the management. They cannot use their own professional judgment and they don't seem to be able to use their own sense of feeling and empathy towards the people they're dealing with. They have a whole yeah, set of yeah. procedures they have to go through mm -hmm. and that to me is a massive, 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 massive problem. And if you set up a business, a business uh, has to go by demand and supply. And is this a business of taking children into care because they have loads of private foster companies and all that and you supply them with the children? Is that what we're having now on demand? I'm a bit confused actually what social work is all about in this country. But the two, the two things that uh, actually really concern me because I've been very involved for years, nearly 40 years with child sex abuse across the water and here. And the things that uh, I noticed in one of the reports coming up now that everything for very young children has to report it directly through TUSLA. And they decide whether it's fit to go to the police. It's here in the family law report uh, that they decide whether it's a criminal. It's, it's TUSLA now, Gardaí. They seem to be handing out summonses as well, criminal summonses, social workers. Are social workers now the Gardaí or they are actually people who are there to support the community? Uh, I'm not saying uh, some guardy don't, but I'm just saying, are they deciding on the criminal, uh, that, social, that the child sex abuse is now a criminal uh, offence in this country? Is it a criminal offence anymore in this country? Have we not learned no lessons? I'm really angry about all this. I saw that legislation, and it says specifically, and I have it there, I wish I could read out of it, but it says specifically that any, through the courts, often Tussler has to decide whether it is a criminal offence for a young child and it's all in the secret whether a young child and the guardian investigated. That's all wrong. That's all wrong. It is a criminal. Child sexual abuse is a criminal offence. It's up to the guardian to investigate everything. It doesn't matter what time it takes. It doesn't matter if they found there's no substance in it. It's a criminal offence and the guardian should be investigated. It isn't up to social workers to investigate criminal offences. And that's what we have in this country now. So we're not dealing with child sexual abuse. And I'm very, very angry at all that. We've gone totally backwards and you can hear the anger in my voice yes. because I saw a lot of children exploited all through my working life and we're back to square one in this country again and we're buried all down into secrecy and I'm appalled. The other thing, and thank you more. And I'm that, really angry about this, yes, by the way. And, and in actual fact, I am seeing something in you that I haven't seen in the social workers that I've met. I've never come in contact with social workers until this year. And what I'm finding is that they're totally lacking in empathy, that they don't appear to have any feelings at all when you, when you sit in on a case meeting with them, with a mother whose baby has been taken. Just totally lacking in feeling. And when I raised that issue as well with Bernard Gloucester, Jim Gibson and Ger Brophy, that was the response that I got. It was a decision taken by the court. This was a decision uh, that the judge made for the baby to be taken. Uh, we don't want to discuss individual cases. We're speaking in general terms. If babies are taken, then it's by order of the court. Uh, no social worker on her own is going to make a recommendation for a baby to be taken. It's done collectively. And um, what I am seeing is that social workers seem to come in packs of two and three, and they spend an awful lot of their time in court. You know, I've sat in now on a number of yeah. court cases um, that were <coughs> that involved social workers. And um, it, all day long, you'll have two and three social workers hanging around the court. Was it like that in your day? Did you spend your days in court? Absolutely not. This is the point I'm making. No, it was a totally different system way back then. It's only uh, under under this present government they set up this total system where there's a lot of people depending on Tusla for big money. You have a whole lot of people, the gals who are totally unregulated, just the guardian of the items. They all come to court with their own solicitors and barristers. You have the social workers with their solicitors and barristers. And then you have parents, and I'm including parents here, who care about their children, who can't afford even to get the legal representation to, 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 to present themselves in court with. It's a totally unbalanced system. It's unjust. There's plenty of laws, but very little justice in the system we're operating now in terms of child protection in this country. And I'm disgusted and shocked that we're now burying sexual abuse under another obscure law, burying it, burying even the reporting of it. How can we do that after all the history of what we went through in this country? How can we do it? And how can a social work profession stand up to that? And they're not standing up because they have mortgages, 
they have children to rear and they have a, a, a and, a, and they move into management of course and then are accountable to nobody there's no accountability so what happens I mean you're not going to lose your job they're going to fight for their jobs I can understand all that but we have the wrong system it's a, it's a, it's as I say it's a business system a corporate management system where's the community in all of this where's reaching out into the community that all appears to have begun I'm just uh, I'm just sad I wouldn't go near social work now as I have to be honest with you I just feel very sad that's all I can say about it Barbara, I notice that you have been nodding your head in agreement with uh, what Maura has been saying. Would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I suppose, look, for me, um, I just find it all very distressing. That's a word I'm going to say. I find the stories that are coming in through ABC are absolutely harrowing. Mm. Um, I, I feel, I believe, actually, that they pick. They pick on the most vulnerable in society. Mm. So not only are they picking on children that have no voice, and bear in mind, some of these children have no voice through a disability. Some of these children have no voice because they've been taken from the only natural habitat that they know, which is their home. Um, I feel they pick on women that are victims of domestic abuse. And for a woman, being uh, after coming out the other side of domestic abuse, you're at your lowest. You're at your lowest. These women have gone to Tusla and begged them for help. And they have brought these women to their knees no support offered they treat them in meetings like they're dirt on the curb i have witnessed it how any woman could treat another woman like this this is society we should be helping each other we should be empowering each other neighbors should be helping each other and what happens is these women when their children are taken or fathers as well or grandparents it's a whole it's not just mothers what happens is they're so embarrassed they tell nobody they keep the story to themselves suffering further isolation uh, there are women that are ringing us because they're suicidal. There is no help for these people. And the one organisation that is trusted with this, TUSLA, are not doing their job. Mm -hmm. And I find it heartbreaking. I actually find it heartbreaking because I'm now at the stage if a woman rang me and said, I'm in trouble, I would say automatically, do not ring TUSLA. Probably take your child and leave the country. It's an awful way for pe to say that to anybody. It's sad. It is so sad. There is no help for these people. Yeah. I've taken a number of phone calls from mothers yeah. who are actually victims of domestic violence yeah. and they're taking very vicious beatings from their husbands and yeah. they're saying under no circumstances will they report it because they have observed how yeah. other women report yeah. domestic violence and to the guardian children. and straight away Tusla were in and they yeah. lost their children. So they, they're actually saying to me, I will take my beatings in order to hold on to my children. And I really think that that is a very, very sad, sad. indictment. Yeah, in 2019. In 2019. Yeah, so very, very sad. I think it's time to wind up our conversation and maybe Deputy Function will give you the honour of having the last word. Okay. So is there, is there anything that you'd like to add further to what has been said? Um, I think probably everything has been covered, just that I do think it is important to still try and campaign for the changes and yeah. try and work with people. I know people lose hope and you lose faith and you think, you know, is it just one person replacing another? Will there be actually any change? But I think we have to try and have hope, particularly for all the people that are experienced in such negative, you know, they have such sad stories and such negative things happen to them. I think we owe it to them to try and work hard to make sure there's changes made. And I do think it's important to make the point as well that there are some very good foster families out there and they are yes, yes, very yes. much needed. Yes. And yes. there is, yeah, yeah, and some yeah. some kids that, yeah. like, that is the best situation for them. And I think that's, for me, is always at the heart. I know I've said that a few times now, but the reason I say that is because it shouldn't be about um, anything else, only what is best for that child. And if it is best for a child to be with a foster family, then that's fine. If, and you know there's lots of different stories but everybody should be treated with respect and you should always be able to get answers you should always be able to meet with someone you should be always able to have consultation you shouldn't be left out in a limb it's being told there's an allegation made and months and months pass and you don't know what's going on or you know you're trying to get your access increased and you don't even know who to speak to that's where they fall down so much and they're only um, you know the tip of the iceberg maybe are the smaller things but I do think it's important to try and um, as difficult as it is, kind of keep the hope alive and just keep campaigning for the changes. Okay, and that's a lovely note on which to end. 
a really wonderful note on which to end. You know, it's a message of hope. And the fact that you have continued to watch this video right through to the end shows that you actually care. And there is something that you can do. You can actually share this video in order to make more and more people aware of what is actually happening in this country. We look to the abuses uh, that was inflicted on mothers and children in the past and we kind of forgive past generations by saying well nobody knew that it was happening but nowadays we do know that there's a terrible injustice being done to birth mothers and their children and there is an onus on all of us to do something and i suppose the most immediate thing that we can do is to spread awareness so can i ask you please to subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel. You're, you're viewing this video on my YouTube channel and if you would just press the, the subscribe button, I need to get a thousand subscribers in order to be able to go out live on YouTube. And as I say, uh, thank you very much for watching. I want to say a special word of thanks to the lady behind the camera, uh, Deirdre, who as always does a fantastic job in making this uh, possible she does she's a one-woman show she does the work of five or six people uh, from RT mm -hmm. and she gets no credit and no payment for it so thank you very much to Deirdre and I would also like to sincerely thank um, Maura Butterly who is the mentor to the Alliance of Birth Mothers Campaigning for Justice and to uh, Barbara Scanlon and um, both of whom have traveled quite a distance to get here to Boswell's Hotel and a very special word of thanks to Deputy Funchinen mm -hmm. for agreeing to come across. I know that you're under time constraints to get back to the Dáil Chamber, but we really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching and please share.